Uh, mo motion re proposed approval by Dáil Éireann uh, of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund Regulations 2016. Um, and it to conclude in 40 minutes. Uh, I call on the Minister of State, uh, Andrew Doyle. Uh, you have five minutes. Okay. Thank you, Cahir. First of all, move the motion. I move, and then to thank you, Cahir. Uh, just uh, by way of background, <clears throat> the most recent estimates available suggest that the horse and greyhound racing industries combined underpin in excess of 24,000 jobs and stimulate approximately 1.6 billion in economic output. The estimates from my department passed by both houses as part of budget 2017 include an allocation of 80 million euros for the horse and greyhound racing fund. This will be distributed in accordance with Section 12.6 of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act 2001, with 80% going to HRI, 64 million, and 20% to Port Nagan, 6 of 16 million. In order to allow the Department to provide the monies allocated in the Budget of 2017, it is necessary to comply with the technical requirement under Section 12, uh, uh, 12 13 of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act to increase the cumulative limit on the, available from, uh, on the amount payable from the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund by 80 million to some 1.118 billion. Uh, this is achieved by way of the regulation submitted to the House today. Uh, the aggregate limit on the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund has been increased in this manner in 2004, 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. Um, just to go to the two industries, horse racing industry, it is estimated that the Irish bloodstock industry provides 14,000 jobs and it contributes almost 1.1 billion to the Irish economy. In 2015, bloodstock export sales rose to 268 million, what was a remarkable year for the Irish bloodstock industry. Ireland holds a distinguished position in the thoroughbred racing world, being the biggest producer of thoroughbred foals in Europe and is the fourth largest producer in the world. Approximately 40% of the EU output of thoroughbreds and 11% of the total worldwide are produced in Ireland. With regard to the greyhound industry, the greyhound racing sector is also an important driver of employment and economic activity, activity in both rural and urban areas. A report by economist Jim Power in 2010 estimated that the greyhound industry employed over 10,300 people and contributed an estimated 500 million euros in economic output to local economies around tracks, which have a wide geographic spread. Um, and as part of the, the government's continued commitment to the sector, uh, the overall objective of the government is to ensure that the horse and greyhound racing industries achieve their maximum potential and in so doing contribute to the economic and social development. Um, just um, with some more up-to-date information on the Greyhound Industry Bill, I will shortly be bringing forward the heads of the Greyhound Industry Bill to ensure that the principles of good governance and regulation are clearly and unambiguously laid down in primary legislation. In broad terms, this bill seeks to provide um, a statutory framework for improved governance, tighter regulation and stronger powers to deal with breaches of the racing code and to address issues identified in the report authored by the Joint Committee on Agriculture, Food and the Marine in 2016, January of 2016, and also in both the Indicon report and the Morris Review of Anti-Doping and Medication Control. I believe this bill will strengthen the Irish greyhound industry and give it the powers to deal with issues of regulation in a more effective way. Um, in conclusion, Cahirlach, without doubt, Horse Racing Ireland and Board Nagan face significant challenges as they work to grow and develop the horse and greyhound industries in an extremely competitive market segment. So I believe that the 80 million allocation is vital to help secure rural jobs and sustain rural communities. Given that these two industries have their respective footprints in many parts of rural Ireland, I am confident that it is, it is the goal of all of us here to re fully realise the contribution that these sectors of these sectors to the Irish economy, to employment and to the social and cultural fabric of this country. Accordingly, I ask for your support so as to assure, in, ensure that the Horse Racing Ireland and Bordnagon receives the funding provided for it in Budget 2017 
and that the very important role that these industries and the economic activity generated by them are sustained into the future. So I commend this regulation to the House. Thank you. There are nine speakers uh, and it has to conclude in 40 minutes, so I would ask people to uh, try and be as uh, prompt as they can. Uh, I now call on uh, Deputy Jackie Cahill. Thank you, look, um, Fianna Fáil supports this motion, and I suppose both industries have attracted a lot of negative publicity in the last couple of months. But I think we wouldn't want to lose sight of the importance of these two industries to our economy as a whole. And you know, the 80 million is money well spent, and they pay. We have, I suppose, the bloodstock industry, which is the envy of many countries around the world, and the same with our greyhound, which is, you know, one of the leading one, one, one of the leading countries in the greyhound business, and would be the en envy of a lot of countries as well. And we see, I suppose, London, which 25 years ago had 26 dog tracks, come March there will be no dog track left in London. So I think, you know, we have to see what we have here. And while, you know, everything hasn't been done perfect in the in the last while. I think we want to recognise the huge importance of our industries and the huge contribution that these two industries make to our economy as a whole. And while we are contributing 80 million, we have to also recognise the revenue that is coming back into the exchequer from these two industries, and that is not insignificant. But I would ask the Minister to look on track bookmakers and the position of track bookmakers in regard to both levy and taxation. And track bookmakers have come under increasing pressure in recent times. A number of track bookmaker, bookmakers, both at dog racing and horse racing, have declined very significantly. And they're an integral part of the industry. And I suppose the atmosphere and the, the, the entertainment value of the industry depends greatly on having track bookmakers present. And I think the legislation needs to be changed to allow these track bookmakers um, to, to operate on a level playing field with the larger operators, which are you know multinational companies. And I think the tax Taxation and levy, one cap fits all, won't work into the future for track bookmakers and change needs to be made there. Thank you. I, I, I too will prepare to welcome this motion, uh, Chair. Um, it's an important industry to, to the Irish economy, be it from the hosses or the greyhound sectors. Um, the money being proposed is welcome. Um, many families supplement their incomes from the environment in, between the house of the greyhound uh, sector. So it has to be welcome and, and show that we, we are back in this industry. Um, uh, Jackie Cahill mentioned there about the, the bookmakers, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with him. Like, you know, it's it's going to the span there. We've got some greyhound tracks, like, you know, and there's only one bookie on site. Where the banter is usually when you have two or three bookies heading after each other to, to get a bit of tout, a bit of money in. Like, and I would support you know, that, um, that the online betting issue is um, addressed in regards to the taxation, that there's a level playing field there. So, Chair, uh, welcome to the motion and wholeheartedly support it. Margaret, uh, Deputy John Brazel. Thank you, Chair. And I also will be supporting um, this motion and very much welcome the 80 million um, uh, funding for 2017 for both the horse and greyhound um, industries. Um, as has been alluded to, they provide valuable employment, particularly in rural Ireland. Um, the, the figure is in the region of 24,000 people, both uh, directly and indirectly, uh, and that is of huge uh, value to the rural economy of Ireland. Um, I want to refer in the few minutes that I have specifically to the greyhound industry because I believe that the challenges that are there for the greyhound industry are very significant. And Minister, you will be aware that there was um, a recommendation from an all-party Oireachtas Joint Committee on the uh, Irish greyhound industry published in January. And we need to move on that. We need to implement the legislation. I welcome the fact that this evening at 6.30 you will be briefing um, interested members on the legislation with a view to having it in place early next year. But we need to restore confidence in the greyhound industry. We need to uh, restore um, public confidence so that uh, there's correct governance in, in Bordenagon that the whole testing procedures around greyhounds um, are adhered to strictly and that people have confidence that the, the, that the industry is clean and well run. And we also need to ensure that there is value for money in the much uh, welcome funding that we are giving. We must ensure that there is value uh, in that and that um, the, the industry rewards uh, the government's commitment to it. Um, there is an estimated um, about 1.1 both industries are worth about 1.1 billion to the economy, so, so our, our investment of 80 million is, is, is well rewarded. But there is still 
uh, very much so in the greyhound industry, a need to restore public confidence and indeed to restore the confidence of the people in the industry itself. Because there's many um, small owners who are in it for the love of the sport and who need the backing of Board Nagan and who need the backing of the legislation that you are about to, to implement and to, to uh, brief us on this evening. So, uh, Minister, while, while the funding is very welcome, there is a lot of work needed in the background, and uh, you will certainly have, have my support in getting that over, over the line so that, so that we could look forward to the, the industry having a bright, uh, pro uh, profitable future. Go Thank on, you, right. Minister. Uh, now call on Deputy Martin Kenny. You have five minutes. Thank you, Hirlok. Um, the horse racing industry and greyhound industry not only have economic benefits but also bring great enjoyment to hundreds of thousands of people in Ireland every year. I have no wish to restrict the growth or development of these industries, although I have serious doubts about the funds dispersed by government to horse racing Ireland and Board Nagan. Every time this funding is discussed, I hear about thousands of jobs in the industry, but sometimes I wonder about the quality of these jobs, and I wonder if they were counted as whole time equivalents, as they are in the HSE or a school or any other state bodies. How many real jobs are there? For, for example, Board Nagan claims there are 10,300 people employed in the greyhound industry. I would love to know where these people work and the basis of the claim that the industry contributes contributes $500 million to the economy each year. Meanwhile, I am told by dog breeders and trainers that the greyhound industry is in crisis and will disappear within the decade if radical reform does not take place. The horse racing industry, according to Horse Racing Ireland, employs 14,000 people and contributes $1.1 billion to the economy. Now, the question is, with two such healthy and vibrant industries, why has the Exchequer got to hand out such an amount of money? Why does horse racing prize money? which is a sport populated by very rich owners and trainers, have to come from an exchequer which cannot pay for the basic medical needs of our senior citizens, for instance. Of course, we cannot almost ma always make those simple comparisons. But this amount of money, 80 million euros, there has to be clear and demonstrable, demonstrable benefits to the society and to our economy. Along with that, there must be strict adherence to corporate governance and transparency in all financial aspects of the industry. The excessive salaries and expenses being drawn down in both organisations is beyond the realm of reason and the decisions of where to spend exchequer money will have to be examined. For example, it was confirmed to me at the Joint Oireachtas Committee that almost €3 million Euros of taxpayers' money will be spent to the redevelopment of Galway Racecourse, mainly on the construction of a champagne bar. There was a time when the people at the Galway Races were happy to drink their champagne in a tent, but now it seems the taxpayer has to pay for the construction of a bar for them. Is this value for money in the context of the economic hardship that so many people are suffering around this country? Horse Racing Ireland has been in the news over the past six months due to the manner of the reappointment of the Chief Executive Officer for the third term. I am led to believe that the irregularities around this appointment of the CEO have continued for over a decade, according to correspondence released by HRI and reported in last Saturday's Irish Times. I have raised this matter before here, and representatives of board of HRI came into the Joint Oireachtas Committee to inform us about this appointment. At that time, the Chairman admitted quite openly that the appointment was against government guidelines, that the CEO's salary had exceeded the government cap, and that the latest appointment was made without even a gesture toward open competition. It was suggested that the Board had no option. It has been suggested that the Board had no option, as the CEO had accrued rights as a contract of indefinite duration. This state of affairs suggests either extreme incompetence or, more probably, an intentional lapse to provide the CEO with the contract of indefinite duration, allowing this situation to transpire. The Minister for Agriculture and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform and the Board of HRI, it seems, feel that this is, was acceptable behaviour. When I raised this matter here in the House to Minister Creed, asking if, considering the blatant disregard for corporate governance displayed by the Board of HRI, he was, he, and would he consider reviewing the amount of money that the Exchequer was providing to it, he referred to my misgivings as a fit of peak. Well, somebody needs to have a fit about it. I still have not got any justification for the way this appointment was allowed, except that it seems that it does not matter because they say that the right man was appointed for the job. I feel that this House must exercise more vigilance regarding the appointments and funds and the way in which they are expended and distributed through these two industries. It would be more appropriate for less exchequer funding to go to prize money for big races and more to other sectors of the industry, like point-to-point -point racing, harness racing and programmes for better breeding and husbandry, incentivising small breeders to improve their stock. It is hard to understand why there is a resistance in the government benches and presumably from Fianna Fáil as well for the increasing of the betting tax so that the industry can be more, more self-funding. Then of course we have the greyhounds. Anyone who would even take a casual look at the way in which the greyhound industry is run would have to be very alarmed. 
We have had various reports and inquiries, such as the Morris report into the doping in the greyhound industry, and there was the Indicon report into Board Nagan, which found more disregard for corporate governance, people outstaying their terms on the board, and even the Joint Oireachtas Committee published a report highlighting serious flaws in the running of the sector. The integrity of the greyhound industry is in tatters, mainly due to the seemingly laissez-faire attitude to the use of performance-enhancing drugs. The Greyhound Board in Britain warned owners as late as 2014 of the dangers of buying dogs from Ireland and urged all trainers to exercise due caution and diligence in, ass in assessing the drug status regarding the purchase of dogs from Ireland. The use of AI, AI straws from dogs who are more than two years deceased is illegal, yet this rule is continually flouted to the detriment of the quality and renewal of the breeding stock. This is a terrible state of affairs, and it seems as if government seems fit to turn a blind eye and not enforce the necessary discipline and governance on this sector. What is the rationale to the expenditure of this money? I believe that this House deserves more than a shrug from the Minister, and indeed we should demand action to reverse this. Thank Board Nagan has failed to do its job. Just one couple of sentences left. Well, has in, failed to do its job. The recommendation of Morris, Indicon and indeed the Agricultural Community Committee have not been implemented. And the government tell us that they are preparing new legislation, but there is already legislation there to deal with these regularities, but I it has have, not been I used. Have to get you to conclude, under, Deputy under, the circumstances, I, under the circumstances, I cannot support the funding of this allocation with these two bodies, and I will be calling a vote on the matter. Thank you. It seems uh, that these two, it seems that these two bodies... Limited, sorry, Deputy. There is a limited period of time. And I, I, understand. Other deputies. I, I understand. It was ten minutes last night, and that's why you prepared well, it. Well, you will understand. I'm, I'm flying through. I'm asking you to conclude, and I'm calling on, on, on Deputy uh, Willie Penrose. And I will, be call, I will be calling a vote on the matter today, because it's outrageous that this money has been spent Deputy in this Penrose. way. Deputy Penrose. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the horse and greyhound sector plays an important role throughout Ireland. Uh, they are important contributors to the economy of rural Ireland and the enjoyment and recreation of rural life in Ireland, and they support thousands of jobs, although the question of the 10,500 jobs in, in, greyhound, in the greyhound industry is more than questionable. I think that, that, that doesn't stand. The, that, that report of uh, Jim Power was, was six, seven years ago. So, look, let, let, let's come into reality. Since £80 million has been allocated to these two industries, of which £60 million goes to the greyhound industry, it is important that we acknowledge that this is taxpayers' funds and has been granted despite many competing demands for limited resources, which comes from right across society. So the expect, taxpayer is entitled to expect and to get top value for the money for their significant investment. I support the allocation of these necessary funds and we, we see their, and their, and their importance, but surely the aim of the industry is to get to a point where they are less dependent upon public funds and become self-financing. They routinely tell us that about the circular return of tax money collected from the betting industry. But a lot of the betting industry, that is incorrect. A lot of the betting industry is generated through other sports, soccer, rugby, darts, a melee of sports. Actually, horse racing is one of the lesser contributors. So let's, let's, let's not cut people with, with, with telling them lies. I support Deputy Cahill in his, in his point about all bookmakers being classified as well. It should be classified on the basis of turnover. Small bookmakers on offshore bookmakers are gone from the high streets. They've disappeared in like nobody's business. And anyone with less than a, a, a turnover of two million should be classified differently than the Ladbrokes and the, the Boyd Sports and all those other ones. So HRI must ensure that a value for money audit, which I call for, must be undertaken without any further delay and assure people that any hiccups in relation to corporate governance have been fully addressed. And we do not need any further spectacles in relation to appointments at the top or elsewhere, for example, that all contractual issues are fully complied with and are airtight so that government policy is fully recognised and uh, as, as laid down therein and that lessons are learned from the debacle that we have witnessed. Further, they must ensure that adequate funding is provided to small race courses throughout Ireland, such as Kilbegan, Roscommon, Limerick, Sligo and Ballinrobe. This is a sport of kings, but it's not shouldn't be for kings. It's time to get away from that. And there's, no use, uh, there's an old statement I can't describe it here, it's a very old one. You stop rubbing grease to the fat pig's bottom. Uh, there's too many people get, getting well, well off, so it's time to get it down to the very grassroots. More point to points than that. Of course, that's why he, they wanted to bring in point to points under the regulation, and I stopped it, and I'm very proud of that. The Greyhound Board are to receive in excess of €280,000 per week from the Irish taxpayer this year. And we have had a plethora of reports pointing out significant concerning issues and shortcomings with this industry, and which has alarmed many of the stakeholders involved. We have the Indicon report, the Morris report, and an excellent report by the Joint Directors Committee on Agriculture, Food and Marine under the excellent chairmanship of yourself, Minister, which clearly shone a light on significant issues with the, within the greyhound industry across a number of areas, including integrity, doping, and medication, and general governance. 
I know you have the new heads of a bill for the greyhound sector almost ready to go and will be ready to go in the new year. And the sooner the better, Minister. And we will hopefully uh, give us all a chance, and, and particularly all of the important stakeholders in the industry, an opportunity to turn over a new leaf which will tackle once and for all the use of prohibited substances and ensure welfare objectives are also looked at and maintained and, and, and regulatory controls are strengthened. It is timely to update the legislation in any event. Imagine this government legislation was brought in in 1958, what, almost 60 years ago. It's just a wonder things run out of control in this country. You're regulating everything that's, 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 in other areas that's regulated out of existence. Of course, in Ireland we have two extremes. We have no regulation or we regulate things out of existence. There's no such thing as a happy medium. And that's, that's a huge fault uh, that everything happens here, because bureaucrats then get in and they regulate a thing out of existence. And when all of this is addressed, that there will be a, a renewed confidence in the industry. Now, when you talk to some of the stakeholders involved, they're very concerned about the future, particularly in the dog industry. And many question, as I said, the old figure bandied about having 10,500 employed in the industry. We need to get full answers and not incomplete answers or half-baked answers. And the Irish Greyhound Board or Board of Gun must be forthcoming in addressing shortcomings and listening to concerned voices when they raise issues. They shouldn't be always questioning the motives of people who raise issues. They raise them in the best of motives here, no more than Deputy Kenny or anybody else here. I don't take issue with anybody raising issues in this, in this way. I know you have a National Greyhound Consultant Forum, Minister, which brings together all of the stakeholders involved, but this should not be just a talking shop or another pro forma talk shop, and it should have teeth and strong powers of recommendation, which should be heard by the board itself, because I think the board only listens to what it wants to listen, and they come in and present us with fairy tales. That has to stop. There's money there and involved, and, and, and they have to count for it in a proper and efficient way. Uh, Deputy Paul Murphy, five minutes. Will allocate uh, 80 million euros of public funds to the horse and greyhound racing industry for quote business, financial and development plans. It increases the cumulative limit in funds to over 1.1 uh, 1 billion and as we understand 80% will be allocated to horse racing and 20% to greyhounds. Um, these funds are linked to the revenue received from the gambling industry linked to excise duty on off-course betting. Uh, that's a toxic link right there. It gives an incentive and a massive boost for the promotion of gambling, um, one of the most parasitic industries. Some reports estimate that 30 to 35 per cent of that industry's profits come from problem gamblers. In other words, it's an industry that destroys people's lives. Uh, and that link ensures that profit is put at the core of horse and greyhound racing industries, therefore providing incentives for cruel practices and for corruption in those industries. Um, I want to concentrate my remarks mostly on the question of uh, the greyhound industry, where in recent years we have seen uh, many, many scandals. Um, as part of its anti-doping programme, the IGB have reported that 1% of samples have tested positive last year, but that is only the tip of the iceberg. Pharmacology experts, vets, many of the industry treat those official figures with um, understandable scepticism. The IGB's own Morris report on doping has pointed out severe problems with anti-doping measures in the greyhound industry. The report found that the National Greyhound Laboratory does not have facilities to test many of the drugs used to, to, to dope greyhounds. Another major scandal in the greyhound racing industry is that of the dogs behind the scenes that never make it to the tracks. It's estimated that approximately 10,000 greyhounds retire from racing or, as is more common, are born but never make it into racing. Approximately 1,200 were homed per last year, leaving 88% with an unknown fate. That needs to be investigated. We've had high-profile cases of dogs being cruelly killed with little or no consequence for those caught. In 2014, there were only 15 investigations into welfare incidents in the industry. It's clear that a blind eye is being, cruel, is being turned to the cruelty that does exist by the IGB and by the government. On top of that, we see the attempts by the tops of the industry to establish new markets in East Asia and China in particular. Um, it's clear, and we have 
been arguing for this and will continue to argue for it and will argue for it in the legislation that is due to come on the question of the greyhound industry, that exports to Macau and exports with, with any states with a poor animal rights record uh, without proper protection for animals uh, should be banned. Uh, for those reasons, we will be opposing uh, this motion as it places further profit at the core of the industries and does nothing to tackle uh, the cruelty and corruption. Deputy Murphy, uh, now calling Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, you're sharing time with Deputy Claire Daly. Thank you. Two minutes for me and three for Deputy Daly. Um, the Greyhound industry is getting some £16 million in funding from the government, and yet within that industry we have appalling examples of animal abuse and the lack of concern for animal welfare. And I do acknowledge that there are Greyhound owners who look after their animals, but we do know of those owners with no compunction who are ready to sell off their unwanted Greyhounds to places like Macau, and only for the animal welfare campaign is that practice would still be going on. And then we have the greyhounds who don't make the cut, abandoned and left to the rescue sh shelters to look after them. So how much of the 16 million will go to the animal rescue centres? This is an industry where the attendances are down, the sponsorship is down and support is down. And I would draw your attention to Australia, where the government is the ones who are leading the investigation into the industry. And again, to return to the other aspect of cruelty, and that of course is live hair coursing. And we've so many examples of where the hair, the most gentle of animals is tossed, it's mauled, it's injured and it's killed, terrorised in the name, so-called name, of entertainment. And we have the most recent savagery in Rathdowney, coursing club in County Leash, where the hares in the compound, 78 of them, were killed by dogs. And it's not an isolated incident. We have other examples of that independent evidence. So the coursing gangs illegally also capturing hares, using them to blood greyhounds. And they're given carte blanche to do as they please. And I want to know, where does that fit into the, quote, social and cultural fabric of the country. You mentioned good governance, but I want to see where is the commitment to animal welfare, to those principles, and the commitment to eradicating blatant cruelty to animals that we see in the greyhound industry. Thanks, Chair. Um, I agree with the points made by my colleague. I think the idea of giving public taxpayers' money to Board Nagan, an organisation which oversees the barbarism of hair coursing, is absolutely abhorrent. And of course, we know also from the scandal that engulfed horse racing Ireland earlier in the year that this is an organisation which is actually incapable of handling public money. And we have to ask ourselves. Why are we doing this? Why is a salary of €247,000 for the CEO of Horse Racing Ireland way above the pay cap being sanctioned? When the scandal broke in the autumn, the excuse was that Mr Kavanagh had a, a contract of indefinite duration. But the lobbying started long before there was even a whiff of that, a whiff of his first contract. And the documents revealing correspondence back to O3 are very, very serious, I think, for the industry, but also for the department itself. It seems incredible that back in 2010, the department accepted HRI's contention that Mr Kavanagh was covered by Tupi when he wasn't. He'd voluntarily left the Turf Club in 2001 to apply to become the first uh, CEO of HRI. So Tupi didn't even uh, exist or apply in this case. Surely the department could have queried that. But the issue in front of us here today is the fact that in a period of 2001 to 2016, 1.3 billion has been given to the horse and greyhound racing industries. That's some amount of public money to be given to two commercial enterprises who base themselves on exploiting animals for profit. And not just animals, but also people as well. Because there's a scandal much bigger than the scandal that engulfed the CEO of Horse Race in Ireland uh, earlier this year, and that is the scandal of the working conditions of people in that industry, which are not just illegal and immoral, but are actually potentially criminal. And the idea of us sanctioning a cent of public money into these organisations is utterly abhorrent. We know that stable staff are being treated in complete uh, ignoring and breach of the Organisation of Working Time Act. The vast majority of these people never get two days off in a row. They never get a full weekend off unless they're on holidays. They're not paid for travelling. And given the amount 
of hours these people are forced to work, it is very likely, I would say, that many are on less than the cr minimum wage, which is not just illegal, but is actually a criminal offence. And I want to put the House on notice that come early next year, when we're back here, I will be calling for investigations into this industry way beyond what we have seen uh, already, because I think they are completely out of control and uh, unchecked. The idea that most of the public money going to HRI uh, is going on prize money, again, is absolutely disgraceful against the backdrop of a severe exploitation of both animals and uh, staff, and uh, I'll certainly be uh, opposing the motion before the House today. Go on with, uh, Deputy Matthew McGrath, five minutes. Motion here today, and say first of all, you know that the small greyhound owners, the small horse train that we knew and I knew as a boogaloog but a backbone of rural communities. And indeed, I hear my talk to Sullivan and talk to Daly, and I've asked them countless times to come and see what goes on in Calmel, her national crossing uh, meeting, and come and see what really happens down there. And of course, they've always refused. And I say they're entitled to their point of views, but there's nothing like that. They're not so blind as those who cannot see. But it was the backbone of the industry. But it's not anymore, and unfortunately, and the small bookmakers as well. They must be supported. Everything in this country has become big, is powerful, and wonderful, and to help the small people. That is God is where we are, and we have little control over our industries then, and little control over our jobs and everything else. We have the jobs quoted here this morning, and certainly there was those kind of jobs. But whether they're still there or not, I don't know. But we need a proper, holistic evaluation of where we're going, and we don't need CEOs and that kind of money, quarter of a million per year, and either of the associations. 80, 80 million and, and 16, 84 million for HRI and 16 million for the greyhound industry. Now, a documentary was done last week in RT, and I believe it's quite damning. And I don't know why, uh, it, what I heard anyway from Philip Boucher Hayes was that, uh, that um, coursing people, uh, the, the management uh, of the Irish Coursing Club would not uh, co go on and be interviewed. Well, they had a right to be on and be interviewed and defend the industry and defend the good people in it. And there's no place for the rogues and the blackguards and the baggagons uh, that, uh, bag that uh, destroy the industry. And there's no place for rogue exports of greyhounds like the two deputies have spoken about. That must be weed it out and sort it out because it will destroy our industry. We have fabulous grounds in Waterford, Clanmel and in Eden Tuttles. And they were used for many other social events as well, like hospice fundraising and schools fundraising and what knows. And there's a huge industry around the people. And everyone I see that has a greyhound has to have a little trailer and has to have a kennel. Everyone has to, that has the pony for hunting has to have a horse box and, and veterinary and tackle, support, tackle shops. We cannot be like Sinn Féin and just deny this, that this is not happening at all. This is of their own people creating this. But it's the big part of the industry that I have many, many issues with. And I have the same uh, with, 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 with what's happening in the, in the horse race industry, where Kant Lumber, it's like one in my own area, who have done great work, who are recognised all over the world for the prowess in racing industry. But why do they need government support? And why do they need the generous tax regime that uh, Charlie Hawhey brought in in his day to stimulate the industry? When they can buy up every parcel of land that comes up for sale in Tipperary, Limerick, Waterford, Cork and Kilkenny and beyond Kildare as well. And they're not leaving a living for anybody else. We cannot support an industry that is just taking the lifeblood out of our communities. And that's what's happening with the bloodstock industry. The same is happening in other parts of the country as well. And I have called here for legislation. And Minister, when you're looking to talk about legislation next year, please look at this. You've look, failed to look at it in the Finance Act. You've failed to look at it anywhere. We don't have a land league. We don't have anybody to protect ordinary small farmers who want to survive, not extend their farmers, but extend their farmers to survive, to keep up with quotas and keep up with the costs and the, and the investment. They can't buy a cottage acre because they're down now to buying the cottages and the acres as well. So they want a landscape that's free of anybody else and there's nobody allowed to live and support anything else. And I do support Deputy Daly in looking at the wages paid in this industry and below minimum wage and the different issues. And I met them before, both the staff and indeed here in the lobby in the last government and indeed the industry about why they have to have, and I understand that racing is normally weekend or whatever, why they have to flex the hours and everything else, but we need openness and transparency and we need this to be investigated <coughs> Properly. We need to support the small, small trainers, the small bookies, the ordinary small families that had the greyhounds, had the, 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 the bread their horses, and had a bit of look and a bit of, a bit of bravery and a bit of, um, I suppose, satisfaction out of the sport, and who love the sport and want to protect the sport. But we also have to look when we talk about animal cruelty and look at it very much so. Last year we couldn't have our national open coursing in Clonmel because all the hares had been killed by marauding gangs of people who the animal rights people don't want to tackle at all. And these are the same people 
now we're talking about giving the ethnic status to, in the very near future in this house. And here we are. They've gone out with terriers, with lutchers. They had videos of the killing hares and they had five and six dogs after here with no muzzles. That's what happened to the industry. That's what's happening to the gangs where Minister Deputy O'Sullivan is talking about. It's not when a regulated coursing meetings are held because the ICC are there and rightly so, and the VITs are there and the department are there and rightly so. We want a regulated industry and we want it to protect it. But we can't have people terrorising their homes and they ring the guard in, they're threatened that they'd be burnt out or they're threatened that, that their fences are cut down. We could not, all the hares were killed, mercilessly by dogs, lurchers, as the terriers, gangs of men and vans and indeed uh, putting up on Facebook then the videos of the, 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 the hares that they had captured and killed with five and six dogs. Is that sport? That's animal cruelty at its worst. But animal rights people, including some TDs here, don't want to know anything about that because these people have protection well, and are above the law. So that's where it must be weighed out. Thank you very much. Thank you. To conclude, uh, Deputy Eamon Ryan, five minutes. Uh, and I just on behalf of the Green Party want to add our voice to those who have already spoken raising real concerns about the uh, development of the horse rating and greyhound industry, the horse breeding greyhound industries in Ireland and it's not out of a disrespect or dislike for people involved in those industries, they are people who have got uh, a hugely important role in Irish society and yes in the Irish business world but actually sometimes you have to regulate business so that it actually for its own sake, for its own protection for its own long term future and I think this House for too long and a series of governments for too long have been looking to turn a blind eye and not be willing to address the real problems that are existing. And what we see in recent times, the likes of the kind of scandal emerging about export of Irish greyhounds and so on to the UK, where there are internationally now questions asked about the doping of animals, about the treatment, about overbreeding, about animals being sent to China, with a whole range of different animal rights issues, which I think we cannot ignore. It is actually in the interest of people with an interest in dogs and horses Forces, that we actually set the highest standards to get that right and I don't think anyone could argue that that is what exists in this country at this present time. Let us be one of the best countries in the world for breeding of horses and for dogs but if we're going to do that let's do it to the highest possible animal welfare standards and industry standards and I do not believe that that is placed at the moment in our country. For that reason we will be opposing the, the uh, proposal and would agree to support the vote that's been called by other parties here beforehand. Thank you. No other speakers, uh, and the 40 minutes has just elapsed. Um, I'm requi required to put the question, uh, and the question is uh, that the motion be agreed to. Uh, the deputies are in favour of the motion. Abergi Tal. Uh, the deputies that are against Abergi Shneil. Shneil will and Kesh Dritta. The question: uh, If if and seen as a division is demanded, uh, it will be postponed until the weekly division time of this Thursday. Understanding Order 70, Paragraph 2. Uh, Gormagov, uh, 